Matt Jackson? Well, we're here at the old Chevron. Oh, the old Chevron getting some gasoline in our old buses. And we're going to go to the old Top Notch. It is. It's so uh, it's old, old. It's There's an old theme here. That's right. Anyway, <laughs> it is the third Saturday. It's our monthly gathering at Top Notch. All the Volkswagens from town join up. It's going to be a fun night tonight. That's right. Uh, it's been a, it's been a, uh, it's been a month since we've been. Yeah, it's a little hot today, but you're going to come with us and we're going to have some fun tonight at Top Notch Hamburger. Yes, join us for fun. See all the people we're going to see and uh, wow, we'll, we'll find somebody we're going to talk to tonight. So join in for the fun, everybody, and this should be a good one. Let's go, Willie. Willie, Willie. Let's go, Willie. Here at Top Notch, I like to get the veggie burger. Well, he's weird. I'm not weird. Yeah, because it's called Top Notch hamburgers, not Top Notch. It's, it's not hamburgers, it's beef burgers or veggie burgers. No, it's not. It's the wrong thing to eat. <laughs> yeah, awesome? Gary, double rainbow. God, it's full on. Double rainbow all the way across the sky. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's a Matt rainbow. Jackson, that's not a double rainbow. That no, would be two a, of them. Uh, that's it's a not single a, rainbow. It's a single rainbow. Matt Jackson, that's a rainbow. And look, a pot of gold ends on Jerry. Jeez, it's like the oh. most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I'm so happy. You see it now? Yeah. This is Jason with Old Folks TV. Make sure you, I'll put a link right here, Old Folks TV. Jason shows up. Okay, I've got my gimbal. Okay, we're getting you guys buttery smooth B-roll. And he shows up with this and he's trying to outdo me. What's up with that, Jason? This is the uh, Ronin SC that I got when I bought a camera for like less than retail. And the guy's like, you want this thing? Yours is know. bigger than mine. I don't know how to use it. That's okay, you'll learn. He's got sport mode. Look, if you pull the trigger. I don't know. You pull the trigger and you run around, they call that sport mode. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea how it works. Check out Jason's channel to see all the sport mode action yeah. as it unfolds. Boy. Wow. Everybody. Well, finally, finally, I get to talk to Lupe. <laughs> Lupe, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, doing good. I, as I told you earlier, it's like mm -hmm. two weekends in a row. I saw you at the Roundup, and mm -hmm. now I see, uh, the Lonely yeah. Star, and here we are at Top Notch tonight. And I'm just, first of all, I'm just glad to see you, buddy. Same here, buddy. It's been a long time that, uh, that you've yeah, been at out. Least about four or five years. Yeah, Lupe's a longtime area Volkswagen guy, and it's just mm -hmm. the best thing for him to be part of everything we love yeah. it and lupe has the one of the most unique cars around and i'm just so glad that you're here and you brought Thank time we got to talk to you about it so yeah what is it we have here lupe what okay, year is your, your, your convertible what we have is a 57 oval bird okay uh it was originally bought into uh austria and then it was taken over and shipped by boat okay. over to san francisco it belonged to a colonel and his wife couldn't handle that it 
you know, you couldn't heat it up. Sure. So right. it, was, it was always cold. And in they San were in Francisco. The San Francisco, it's cold over there. Yeah, so they kind of kept it for many years, and they were just in their garage, and uh, my brother found it. And he offered, made him a price, and they just told him, yeah. So you're kind of like the, considering your brother and you, you're yeah. like a third, second, third yes, owner, you I'm think? the third owner. Third and the thing is, with my brother, you know, he wasn't a, like a mechanic or anything. He had to uh, just drive it for like a year, and then somebody stole his rear deck lid. Oh, my. And then they stole, uh, I think, the tail lights. And so he parked it in the garage, and it was just basically his hamper <laughs> from like 81 until, huh. you know, like 2005. And unfortunately, he, I mean, he would always, I would always tell him, hey, if you ever sell that car, because I had got it running for him. Right. And he rode it, he drove it for another few years. And then uh, he's, when he, I told him, said, if you ever want to sell it, let me know. Let me have first dibs. And unfortunately, he was young and he passed away from cancer. So he left it to me. I kind of changed it up a little bit. I like the black with the red. Right. So, so I changed it. It used to be white. It was painted. I just changed it myself. and. Well, and, you know, and, and it's been in our family for quite a long it time. It has been. I know you've had it for Yeah, I've had forever. it since 2005. Yeah. So we're looking at, what is that, like 18 years. Yeah. And then he had it a little over 20 for sure. So, yeah, it's been in our family, and I kind of want to keep it that way. <laughs> yes, most definitely. First of all, one of my favorite things is you have so many of the, like, period correct accessories. Yeah, I found uh, a and, few, and I kind of... Mostly, you know, like badges and so forth. I like the badges, but then I, you know, I bought the the Motorola uh, radio. radio and it right. worked for a little while, but then those little tubes burn up. Right. It's you got know, the I've, steering wheel lock. Yeah, the steering wheel locks on there. I still have the key, but there's something wrong with the tumblers inside. It's okay. not working that well. Okay. There on the left hand side. That, with the spring. I, yes. Yeah. That's actually, I think the the way it's spelled is L I C H. T H U P E. So I think it's called Lish Tupe or something like that. But basically, what it does is it flashes your headlights as you're driving down the, oh during the day. Gosh. During the day. So, like for passing or yes, something like that? Yes. Exactly. Yes. You know, as, yeah. as I'm hitting 200 mile an hour yeah, exactly. going around a Bugatti. When you're cruising down the Autobahn yeah. and you want that uh, 930 uh, turbo to get out of the way. Right. Yeah, I do my little flash. Fla yeah. And, oh and my gosh. I mean, it's been a great little car. And even the, for example, in the front, I made this bracket in okay. a, about a month ago because uh, just to get it to fit, and I'm waiting for, I'm looking for another one of these. It's a high-low system made by Bosch. And, the horn uh, itself. The horn, yeah, it sounds really good. Guy looks cool, it's so vintage with that badge yeah. on and everything like that, yeah. Bosch badge. Mm -hmm. Lupe, let's, mm -hmm. so you, I mean, You've driven this, I mean, uh -huh. for as long as I've known you. I mean, it, yes. you, I mean, you just, yeah. I mean, it's not your daily, but I know you put a lot of drive oh, yeah. time on. Yeah, I, I, when I bought it on the clock, it said like 31,000. This is back in 2005. Now it's got like 57. Wow. So that's how many miles yeah, I've put yeah, in. Yeah, it's almost, yeah, it's, it's been yeah. quite a bit. You've driven a lot. You've put yeah. some miles on it for sure. Yeah, it's been a, a good little car. You know, I, I love the car. I named it Frankie, you know, over my, uh, because of my brother. Right that's brother. his name. That's and, right. And, uh, but it's been a, a great little car. It's got a Porsche 356 um, brakes all the way around. Oh, wait, did you put those on there? No, those came with it. So when, when it brother, came from Austria? I don't know. I have a feeling that the owner, the original general, right. my brother wouldn't have done it. He's okay. not a mechanic. Okay. So I have a feeling he just bought it the way it was. So it has 356 brakes on it. Yeah, all the way around. Holy cow. And the thing is with me, this is my first Volkswagen. So I'm used to those brakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a friend of mine who has an oval. And I drove his, and oh my God, <laughs> that scared the heck out yeah. of me. Yeah, oh, it's a lot of different story. It's it? very yeah, different. Yeah, those are like aluminum drums, or right? Yes. Yeah, they're yeah, very they're cute, lightweight they're and heat up quick and stop quick. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's come to the. This is the. This is where. This is the. Like a what a party in the front and business in the back kind of thing. Yeah. So this, this is this is where the. This is the money shot right here. <laughs> All right, yeah. tell us what we got going on down well, here what and, this and is, the reasoning why we have this. Okay, what you're looking at is what I call uh, a, a twin plug tri-power uh, 36 horse. Okay. It works kind of like, the carburation system works kind of like a four-barrel carb. It's progressive. The center is, if, if you, you can easily see the, the choke and everything, just right. like anybody else. What it does is that for starting it idle and running up to like 1,500 RPMs, Everything goes through here with a little bit of air on the sides. Okay. But once you get above 1,500 to 2,000, 
it starts changing over to the outside edges. Okay. So, and those carbs are, are Tillotson carbs. They're actually from uh, Crossley, I think, in the late 40s. But a British car. Yeah, it's a British car. Okay. And if you notice, they have a, they have a copper uh, jet on the right-hand side yes, there. Yes, I see that. Yeah. Well, that's how you adjust the jet. They have adjustable jets, and that's what makes it possible, because you can use those jets and adjust them just to get them correct, just to get them so it runs just right. So, now, so, so this... I mean, let's just look at this cool mm -hmm. air cleaners. Did you, I mean, did you Yeah, that's, you, fa I did that. You fabricated all Yeah, this, right? I work at a machine shop, and uh, I did the welding and... And you fabbed the air cleaner assembly, right. and then you had to make the intake too, Yes, right? I had to get uh, a couple of uh, 36 horse intakes. Right. Well, actually one, and I just cut the tubing in okay. and welded it to the other one. Now, on the ignition side, okay. that... Since I work at a machine shop, I have a friend of mine, one of the guys there at the shop. I kind of threw the idea at him. I wanted a twin plug. And he goes, well, let's make you a, a drive for it. Okay. And that that one is made out of 6061 aluminum. There's three gears in there. Because the way to make this work right, this one has to turn in this direction. Right. In order to make this one turn, if you hit it up against it, it's going to turn the opposite way. So right. you can't have that. So what you do is you put, you can see it right here, that little pin in there. Well, in that pin, there's another gear, okay, which turns it this way, which will make this one turn the same direction as these. You can see a, a hole here where I, you know, can look at Inspection it. Inspection hole to look. Yeah, and and I used to run oil in it, but it was too thin, okay, and it would spill out the bottom. So what I said, you know what? I started using grease. And no problems. And then no problem, okay, because the grease would heat up, and it was just thick enough that it wouldn't okay. pour out. So you're running twin plugs too. Yes. So, yes, there's, so there's, how did you set that up on your heads? Okay. Well, first of all, what I did with the heads is I had them shaved. I don't remember the, the thickness, but I had them shaved because I heard somewhere that in order to run twin plugs to, to take advantage of them, you have to have higher compression. Okay. And because of those heads being shaved off, they're at, I believe, close to 10 to 1 compression on, a, on, wow. on the heads. Okay. The way it works is that the spark plug is in the normal position, and it's a bigger spark plug. Okay. Okay. And then the, uh, the one that's up, coming up underneath is actually goes in between the push rods underneath okay. the push rod covers. All right. I had to use a smaller spark plug okay. because they're real tiny, and I said, you know, I don't want to have to pull the motor out all the time so to get to the plug and you, right. you, there's not a lot of meat in there to put a right. spark plug hole so they had to be real tiny okay and then i had i used platinums so i don't have to worry about right. changing them for like a hundred thousand miles so. sure so uh -huh. with your setup how how much horsepower do you think it's putting out do well you think i really don't know how much i've never had it run right you know? but what i had did notice as soon as i turned it on and drove it it was very smooth right i mean super smooth I just right from the beginning right from the beginning yeah and then what was happening is that all the fuel was being burnt up completely so you wouldn't smell that yeah that, a carburetor as much, smell <laughs> as much usually on a flat ground i can probably do about 80 like today i was wow. i was coming down the freeway and there's and no problem at all no problem no. at all and it was only like <laughs> maybe halfway <laughs> on the throttle it's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I mean, it, it just your goes... mind and your engineering that you did on this, it, to me, is is second to none. It just oh, really is. I mean, I've always just, I've just I, the the, mm -hmm. the fact that you came up with this in your mind. Yeah. And then then you made it happen. Yeah, it's just that know? I saw the tri power uh, on the Samba, an intake, and and you know I saw I said, wow, that is so cool. So I could do that. But I said I, you know, I work at a machine shop. I mean, I'm not a machinist myself. But I can, with those guys, they can do something right. for me. It's just amazing. It's an engineering marvel. And the, I mean, first of all, it's a 57 convertible. That, that in yeah. itself is so cool. And then let's, let's talk about the story. Mm -hmm. You know, it was shipped from Austria and a general or a colonel owned it. And then, right. then it, your brother, and then it's a, and then you have it as a tribute to your brother, right. which is so amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and then it, it, and it's just a part of you. I mean, I, I see this car, it puts a smile on my face, puts a smile on everybody's face. Mm -hmm. We know you're here. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's just, I, I, I just, I'm glad to see you, buddy. It's, yeah, well, it's, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad to be here. You know, and it's, you know, and I'm starting to take it out more and Good. more. And everybody likes it. I get thumbs up everywhere, left and right. I mean, that is really it. I mean, we always talk about that. Just, man, just, I mean, that, whatever you have, just get it, get it running, get it going, and drive it, enjoy it, and get out with the community and have some fun. And, well, I, I just want to say thanks for sharing Frankie with us tonight. 
and I'm just glad that you brought it out. And the story behind your engineering on the, the motor and everything is just, it's I, I, its amazing. Thank you. It's really good to see you, buddy. All right, thank you. Thanks I for being here. appreciate it. Yes. And VW uh, Life, thank, thank you. Thank you. Hey Gary, what a great night. It has been a fun night here at the old VW night at Top Notch. Guess what happens one month from tonight? The VW Harvest 2022. There will be a lot of cars here. So uh, everybody uh, come to uh, Austin for uh, the third weekend of October if you can for the VW Harvest. There will be much rejoicing. Saturday night will be VW night at Top Notch, the night before we cruise into Top Notch and then the big show on the 16th. But we hope to see you guys. It's going to be a fun time, but uh, it was fun tonight. Lupe is one of my all time favorites. Yes, we've been waiting to get Lupe on the channel because, you know, obvious reasons, and we hope you guys enjoyed yeah, the whole cool story today. And him telling us all about Frankie yeah. and all his engineering on that car is just phenomenal, and the story. I mean, it's like. It's just layer of layer of awesomeness. Yes, yeah, so that's the one of the most unique Volkswagens, and that's really what all Volkswagens are unique, and that was especially unique. It, very much so. And it's good to have, good to see Lupe. We were just excited. So we hope you guys have enjoyed tonight's uh, episode. It's been a lot of fun out here hanging out with everybody tonight. It cooled off nicely. We had a rainbow. We had a rainbow. <laughs> so it's always a good sign. Yes, yeah, we, we were lucky. Rainbow. And the pot of the pot of gold was Jerry and Helga. Yes, <laughs> at the uh, end of the rainbow. <laughs> It's amazing when the world does that. That's it just so shines on us. It just shines on us. <laughs> Unicorns and rainbows. Unicorns and rainbows. We'll see you guys. <laughs> Make sure you tell your aunts, tell your uncles, tell everybody you know about VW Life. This is what it's all about, hanging out with your buddies and just having a good night. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you all soon.